Well, yes, Le Pen had a disastrous uh, debate first time round. She came across as not at all credible on policy, especially on economic policy. She came across as ill-prepared, and she came across, frankly, as unfit for office. Now, she's had five years to work on that and to get it right, and she has been training uh, pretty much for those five years for the rematch that's now underway. But Le Pen's not the only one who has a problem in that sense. Macron, too, must perform differently from in 2017. He was unknown then. He was fresh. He was new. Now he has to do two difficult things. Defend a five-year record in office and present a vision for the next five years if re-elected. Le Pen, this time round, can play the card of change much more than Macron. What he has to do is show empathy, come off his high horse, try to show that he cares about people's everyday concerns, that he's not the president of the rich that many accuse him of being. So each of the two candidates needs to try to correct their perceived weakness. For Le Pen, lack of credibility. For Macron, lack of connectedness, lack of empathy, in order to attract new voters, not just from the far left constituency of Jean-Luc Mélenchon, but also from the 26% of electors who abstained in the first round, and lastly, from those voters who are still, this morning, undecided. And they could be as many as 15%, maybe up to five or six million. So a critical audience for both candidates to try to sway their way. Professor, it's interesting to hear you say that this is not the runoff people wanted, given that we're here as a result of the first round of voting. What was the runoff that people wanted and, and what makes you say that? <laughs> they didn't want this one. That's what the polls threw out. The five, because the, throughout the five years of Macron's presidency, this has been predicted. It would be Macron, Le Pen, the rematch. Now, polls said this was expected. But polls also said the French didn't want it. They didn't know what they wanted. They wanted something different. There is an appetite in France for a new offer. But what has happened is that the centre-left socialists, the centre-right Republicans, who have governed France throughout the entirety almost of the Fifth Republic, have completely collapsed. There is nothing now standing between Macron on his centrist island and the extremes of far right and far left. There is a hunger in France for a new offer, a bit like Macron brought in 2017, but he doesn't have that novelty now. Uh, if Macron is elected, for many, it will be a re-election by default. It will be the lesser evil. And in a sense, that's what this debate tonight is also going to hinge on. It's who will be the lesser evil to elect for five years of the next five years of the presidency. Hmm. Let's talk about Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who many are calling the kingmaker and who you mentioned as uh, being crucial to the second round of vote outcome. He got 22 percent of the vote in the first round, and now he and his supporters have the opportunity to play kingmaker. What matters most? What issues matter most to this contingency? Yes, that's a, that's a really good question, uh, because neither Macron, where he sits in the centre, on the centre right, nor Le Pen, on the, the far right, neither of them uh, can appeal naturally to Mélenchon's voter base. But they have to. They have no choice. Uh, with almost 60% of the first round vote having been cast for extremist candidates of one sort or another, uh, it's all Macron has to reach for. He's on a centrist island where there's little within easy reach in terms of votes, vote transfers. His difficulty is how to reach across to Mélenchon voters on the far left. And what he's trying to do is to appeal to them on environmental issues and to some extent institutional issues, instituting a, a proportional representation, which they really want, uh, while retaining his centre-right base on economics. Le Pen has a similar difficulty, how to retain her far-right issues of uh, security, immigration, identity politics, uh, while attracting Mélenchon voters on 
socioeconomic issues, such as cost of living and her redistribution proposals. That, what, that's what, how she's aiming to attract the Mélenchon voter. So each candidate is attempting to both retain their core support while selectively reaching across to Mélenchon voters. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersecchi and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.